everybody the baseball team stinks all right and that's the show five star hero let's no, <laughs> all right <laughs> that's the show no i'm kidding i'm kidding or am i <laughs> Yee. oh mate. no uh yes it does stink uh the way things have been trending uh with the baseball team as uh, this season has progressed. Uh, things haven't gotten any better, uh, but at least, you know, the Tigers are currently uh, winning their midweek game. They're now one out away from securing the victory over uh, New Orleans and uh, their former Blake Dean, former LSU Tiger, their head coach. Always love playing New Orleans to see Blake Dean. Uh, always pull for them because uh, Blake Dean's an LSU legend. So I got nothing for love for for you and O. But the Tigers are beating them, thankfully, uh, not losing their midweek game. So we, obviously we will recap uh, the weekend in baseball. Uh, it was another tough one for the Tigers, obviously, as you already know. We'll give you our thoughts on on how the weekend went in Knoxville. Uh, also, LSU had a spring game on this past Saturday. Um, a lot of optimistic things, I think, that we saw um, for Brian Kelly in this this spring game. Uh, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to discussing that and hearing what Zach uh, will will have to say, kind of his takes, his what he saw uh, on Saturday with the spring game, uh, and of course, I'll share my thoughts. Um, I'll share my thoughts as well uh, for the spring game. So. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what Zach has to say about that, what he thought. Um, obviously, I think you always got to take the spring game with a little grain of salt. Uh, you're, you're, you're certainly not showing everything, right? Uh, you're not going to, you know, roll your playbook out there for everybody to have film on. Um, so you got to take it with just a little bit of, you know, man, the puppy's having a time back there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I got I got to be muted for a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, we'll we'll discuss that, and then there's been some you know some motion in the transfer portal um, for LSU in terms of uh, men's basketball, women's basketball. There's been a few updates as well, and of course LSU football as well. Um, Currently, or not currently, um, getting back in there. All right, there we go. LSU Tigers close the game out. Uh, they uh, they take the victory over the Privateers. I was just saying, Zach, I always love playing UNO, and I always got love for UNO. Uh, Blake Dean's the head coach over there, LSU legend. Um, but LSU gets gets the victory, the midweek victory. Yay. Six to three. Tigers win the midweek. Woohoo. Can we please win a weekend series in the SEC now? <laughs> oh, man. So, Zach. Um, so, well, there's plenty to talk about tonight. Zach, what is uh, kind of your thoughts coming off this weekend in Knoxville? I, I mean, Obviously, there were some pitching things that were different. Um, but other than that, man, I I don't know what else there is to say other than thank the Lord we're, we're through that tough stretch. 
Um, but you're you still have to go to Columbia this weekend, and you you gotta you gotta go play in Columbia. And Missouri swept, uh, I think it was Vanderbilt or South Carolina earlier this season. It was Vanderbilt, wasn't it? Anyways. Yeah, uh, I, think, uh, I think it was Vanderbilt, yeah. Uh, so it's not like Missouri's – I mean, they're they're one of the lower-tier teams. It's a team I think you can go win this series, but you got to go play in Columbia. And obviously, this LSU baseball team just has not put – really anything together. Um, Zach, maybe we can kind of give our thoughts on, you know, if, if the rest of the, the season goes like this and nothing really comes together, what, what that may look like. But, Zach, what are your thoughts this weekend, Knoxville, maybe what caught your eye? You know, I think we know the problems right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I, we, we've kind of beat that one to death. But what's what's your thoughts coming off the weekend with Knoxville? You know, I was really hoping that we'd try to at least get one. Um, and unfortunately, he didn't, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it, I don't really, Honestly, I don't really know what else there is to say uh, because it feels like everything that could be said has already been said. Uh, you're having the same issues. So, you know, what, what more can you say? Um, I did – I did – Find it interesting that they started uh, Nate on Sunday, um, and I thought I was okay with that. I like that. You know, I think Nate has been one of the more trustworthy pitchers. Although his record isn't great on the season, I do think um, that he has had a pretty good season, and he's he's reliable. He's experienced. He obviously um, is part of the reason. Um, that you won a national championship uh, with his performance against Tennessee. So why not go up and throw up against against Tennessee again and see what happens? Uh, unfortunately, it just, it just didn't go uh, the way that you wanted it for the Tigers. You know, obviously, um, again, competitive, but just not able to finish. It, Reagan, it feels like every single time that LSU is able to get a lead, they just automatically give it right back up. And uh, it's it's really frustrating uh, as a, as a fan to watch. Uh, it's 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 frustrating because you know they're like this close, um, and they just can't seem to um, be able to pull out these really tight competitive ball games. Um, and, and a lot of it is due to the bullpen. Um, so you still haven't figured out any of those problems. Yeah. Uh, are you able to? win some games here down the stretch now that your competition is not as not as tough. I mean, it's still going to be difficult to win. It's in the SEC, you know, that arguably the easiest um, opponent you have on your schedule, you have to go on the road to play them. Yep. Um, you still have to play Texas A&M, who's now number one in the country. I mean, <laughs> yep. it, it's just – it's brutal. And right now you're looking at – at this team going and we make the postseason, right? And I don't think anybody I don't think anybody heading into this year ever thought we'd be saying that, but that is the reality of of this year's team. And you would have hoped that this this weekend they would have been more competitive, gotten maybe stolen at least one game and weren't able to do that. And that's just really been the story of this team is they just haven't been able to execute even though they have had the opportunity to execute and to win ball games. Yep. It just hasn't been the case. So, more of the same, Reagan. Zach, you so frustrating. Um, you had bases loaded in the ninth inning uh, of the very first game. Uh, it was six to three, which it was six to one most of the game, and but you still played it two runs. In the ninth inning, made it six to three, and you had an opportunity there. It was six to three. Matt Bingham was up, bases loaded, and you squander the opportunity. You could have really swung the momentum of the game of the game and this season if you pull off a moment 
if you pull off a moment like that, game one of Knoxville, if you can get a hit when you absolutely need it, and, and they have failed to do that, Zach. There, there has been so many crucial opportunities that were like hinging moments like that could have turned this season around, given this team momentum, and they have come up short every single time. Man, like every time. Um, so there was the, the, the night, the, the first night, bases loaded, three-run game, ninth inning. You squander that opportunity. What was really frustrating was Saturday. Holman goes out and gives you a gem, an absolute gem of a game, holds this very explosive lineup. Um, what was it, to, to one run? To zero runs? Zero runs, right? Yeah, zero runs. Uh, you're muted, Zach. I, I, you were trying to say something. Anyways, um, he threw a gym, and you had a one-run lead, I believe it was. Hitless uh, through five innings is what I was trying to say. Yeah, he's hitless through five innings. Um, and I'm pretty sure you were up one to nothing. And the very first – he, he, he gave up a walk, I believe it was. Uh, and there was a guy on first base with, like, one out. Blake Burke is coming up. And so it's a lefty hitter. And it was like in the sixth inning or something like that, and so he goes to to Griffin Herring, left-handed pitcher, left-handed batter, you know, lefty lefty matchup, and the first pitch he throws, it, it goes out of the yard for, for a two-run homer, literally the first pitch, and they take the lead. And what do you do with that? And the yeah. entire game, Zach. You had runners in scoring position over and over again. You out hit Tennessee in game two, nine to five. You had nine runs, or excuse me, nine hits and one run. Mm -hmm. Nine hits, one run. We cannot, for the life of us, drive a stinking runner in from scoring position. I am going to throw up the next time we have a guy on third base with less than two outs and we don't get him home. I am so sick of watching it happen. Yeah. It it, it happens so many times. It it is it is painful to watch. You you literally see a guy standing on third base less than two outs. Majority of the time, you think you're getting a run out of it. With this season, you're looking at it thinking it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I I'm so sick of it. I, I it is so frustrating. Time and time again, they have runners in scoring position. Time and time again, they have opportunities to blow the stinking game open to get some momentum, and they fail to do it every stinking time. I. I don't know where the two strike pitch count approach is at anymore. It's not there. How many stinking times have you watched Paxton clean with two strikes swing out of his shoes? Like, holy smokes, dude, choke up a little bit and be patient. Fight some pitches off. Why are you swinging for the fences every stinking time you got two strikes on you? It, it like it is. It drives me insane, man. You, you so many opportunities to score that game, and you ended with one run. I, I mean, Zach, the, the the scoring line, one run for LSU, nine hits, zero errors. For Tennessee, three runs, five hits, one error. Like, why are you not winning that game? You had eight hits, eight stinking hits off of their best pitcher. Yeah. Why? And Luke Holman gave you a fantastic game. Uh, it just drives me insane, man, how many times we leave runners in scoring position. I, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was like three of 20 at one point, you know, this weekend. Three of 20. 
Yeah. Well, they, they really just thrive off the long ball. I mean, you saw that tonight. I mean, the majority of their offense comes off of hitting the long ball. And LSU is just not, you know, hitting for power as much as you need to be if you're going to survive off of the long ball. And obviously you've seen that uh, come to fruition in these SEC games. And it, it just feels like, Reagan, that every single time the offense is able to do something and, and they're able to score some runs and, and put, you know, put some, put some, you know, eight, nine, seven, you know, like a good amount of runs on the board in a game, well, then your bullpen's terrible. You know, and 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 the opponent is scoring right there with you, and then it feels like okay when we have a really good performance uh, from a, from a starting pitcher, well then the offense is not doing anything, yeah. right? I mean, it's just it, it, any it's everything has gone wrong. Almost yeah. everything has gone wrong uh, while we have been in SEC play. You're three and twelve in the conference. Um, Confidence you, is at an all-time low. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it really is zero confidence. Zero. zero. You've got you've got five more weekends left. The schedule lightens up. Um, you really, really have to go out and win, the, win these weekend series. Like you need to go out and win these weekend series massively. Like, do I think this team has the potential to? You know, flip the script, like literally flip the script, and go like twelve and three. Yeah, because you're playing lesser opponents, so you can go. You know, you have to, you know, sweep a couple weekends. But can you go and win uh, the weekend series every weekend series the rest of the way? Obviously, Texas A&M doesn't look likely, but um, can you go and you win the rest of these weekend series with the opponents that you're playing? Yes. Do you need to sweep? You know, one or two. Yes, um, I, this team still has the potential, the potential to somehow flip the script. You went three and twelve the first five weekends. You, can you go twelve and three these this five weekends? Not likely, probably not. I'm gonna be honest. But with the competition that you're playing, um, do, are you able to do that? Yes, you can flip the script. It just doesn't feel like this team. Has has the like as you mentioned the confidence and no confidence. the the want to to go and do that it just doesn't. Um, I'm not confident in this weekend. I, I mean, I'm just not. I mean, no. there, there's no but, reason to have confidence. You're going on the road again. Yes, it's Missouri, but they've shown you nothing. <sighs> Maybe I, you know, I think they can go win this weekend. Are we confident about that? No. But what drives me crazy is you've been competitive every stinking weekend. Every weekend. You, you've been – you were literally in every game this weekend. Every game. Yep. You had a chance to to blow it open in the ninth inning and make a, a great comeback, turn turn that around. The, the game Saturday, Holman gave you incredible game, one-run lead, bullpen immediately blows it up. Yep. immediately blew it and you blow that game Sunday or, or yeah Sunday you were competitive in that game too they hit a two-run home run made it six to two Tommy White turns around gives you a two-run home run it's six to four and you're you're in the game like two runs is within shooting distance right like you you're in the game the very next inning after Tommy White hits the two-run home run you give up two more runs in the eighth inning, putting the nail in the coffin because yep. you only have one more at bat. You have one more at bat. You're down two runs, and you, you in the bottom of the eighth, you give them up two more runs. Like it, 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 you don't have any confidence. But it, it seems like you're competitive every weekend. Like we need something to go right for this team. Like one stinking time, one yep. time. If one thing can go right, I, I feel like some confidence could be breathed into these guys. I mean, when, when's the last time they won an SEC game? I, I don't even remember. You got swept by Tennessee. What was the weekend before that? Vanderbilt? Yeah, you won, you won Friday night against you won Vanderbilt. won Friday night against Vanderbilt. That's right. It, you should have won that series, too. Let's be real. And you should have won the Florida series. You, you should have won one against Arkansas. Yeah, you know, it's just 
They're, they're, you really should probably be more yeah. like six and six, and you just you're not. Yeah, it, and it is what it is. I mean, at this point in the season, it is what it is. You it lightens up. You've got to go win a lot of games to put yourself in play for postseason. Uh, are we still doing the twelve team format for the SEC tournament? I can't remember. I have to go back and look. I think you are because I, I think next year starts. Uh, the single elimination tournament because you're adding Texas and Oklahoma and every team will be there. I think we're still on the double elimination 12 team tournament. And so you're, you're fighting just to make it to the SEC tournament, man. I, I mean, you are, you're, you're the bottom of the barrel right now. So you've got to go win this weekend. You have to, you absolutely have to go win this weekend. And if you can sweep this weekend, if LSU somehow can sweep this weekend, I think you're working towards changing the narrative of, of this season. Um, you got to play Texas A&M, as you already mentioned, number one team in the country. You also go, go on the road to Alabama, who just beat Arkansas. So, yeah, there's Missouri and there's Auburn and there's Ole Miss, um, but you still got A&M and Bama in the, in the mix of that too, so – yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. You, you, I just at this point, you, you. I think we just have to watch it and take it for what it is. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. If this weekend you go and lose the series, I I will not be surprised in, in the slightest. Mm-hmm. And and with with that being said, Zach, I, I think if that happens, if you go and lose this weekend. Which is which very could happen, very well could happen. Um, like, which I think this is going to happen regardless. Um, I, I think this whole team is going to have a be flipped upside down in the off season. I mean, I, I think we're going to have a major overhaul in the off season because I, I just don't think Jay Johnson is going to put up with it. So, really, we, we we flipped over this whole lineup after the national championship. So, um, I think we're seeing the fruit of that. We all knew we weren't going to be as good as we were last year, but, man, you certainly didn't expect this. Certainly didn't expect this. There's a lot of talent on the team, I feel like, and they just haven't put it all together. They just yeah. Anyways, that's my thoughts on baseball. Thankfully, they won tonight, though. They beat you. Very good. Well, we, we, can enjoy, we can enjoy the midweeks for the most part, right? <laughs> uh, Tom Townsend here said, what's up, guys? Uh, what's up, TT? Uh, Buster Tanner, we will answer this question at the end uh, on our last segment as we discuss uh, the transfer portal. Don't worry, Buster. We'll come back to that one. Uh, Michael, Brown said, Michael Brown Bowen said the, the Hogs have been playing terrible. What's up, Mike? How are you yeah. doing, buddy? Good to yeah, see you. The, the, uh, the Hogs haven't been playing their best, honestly, here Zach recently. Mark is a, is a member of Valley View. Yes, yes. Good to have him on the show. Uh, oh, Danny Girl said it doesn't really lighten up, th- uh, though. Some of our back-end teams are starting to win, and we are not. Uh, there is not a clear path. Any weekend losses will cost us. It is okay. Is it okay, uh, it is okay. that we, we are – it is okay to say we are just not a good team this year. Not all of us had the unrealistic expectations for this team. Yeah, I mean, I think it is okay to say. We're yeah, not- I think it's okay to say there's not there's not this good that that as good as we thought they were going to be this year. Uh, I definitely didn't expect us to be this bad. Uh, I think the pieces are there to not be this bad. You just haven't been able to figure a lot of really important stuff out. Uh, we've said it over and over again. I've said it over and over again. You haven't you haven't cleared out roles in, in the bullpen. Uh, you really haven't even cleared out roles as starters outside of jump. And uh, I mean, you haven't found your third starter really. Um, and and going into this year, you kind of thought, oh, we've got our three guys. We've got Holman. We've got Jump. We've got Thatcher Hurd. Thatcher Hurd didn't work out. So you know you lost that, and then you didn't really figure out anything in your bullpen. Not really. I mean, you have, again, I don't need to reiterate myself, but. Um, you haven't found any consistency uh, in, in really two spots in the outfield. 
Uh, second base hasn't been, you know, uh, solid, consistent. entirely consistent. Braswell's looked good right field. Here, here and there. He, he hasn't been great defensively, uh, especially here recently. But just nothing's really worked out for you. I mean, it's, uh, you have certain guys that hit well uh, here and there. I mean, you have guys that that have had had good streaks. I mean, Mac Bingham looked really good. Um, Hayden Dravinsky's had his moments. Obviously, Tommy got really hot there, especially at the beginning of SEC play. Um, Jones, Jones, and and Jones White has been pretty consistent. consistent. Yeah, Jones has been really consistent. Um, so I mean. Obviously, Milam had a really good start to the season, but has teetered off since then. So right now, it's just the reality is it's just really inconsistent in all phases yeah. of the game. I, I will say this, you know, a little positive light. You know, this weekend the pitching was a little different. Thatcher Hurd didn't even throw. Uh, Chris Demui, I'll give him, uh, I'll give him his props on this. He he said this weekend looked like a statement from Jay Johnson that it doesn't matter who you are, veteran or not, if you can't get outs, you're not pitching. Uh, you saw Sammy Dutton. You saw Cam Johnson. You saw Aiden Moffitt. Uh, Zach, you, you know, Aiden Moffitt looked phenomenal uh, when he was in there. Fastball's ticking up, 96, 97. Uh, and, man, when he can land that slider, you know, it's it's great stuff. It really is. Um, so – the the you know they certainly change things pitching wise to try and make some adjustments but um uh i i don't think milam's batting 314 i think he's below 300 right now um i just saw oh danny girl's recent comment um correct me if i'm wrong though i mean you know i may be wrong i think he was batting over, under he may have jumped up tonight you know i know he had a triple had something else tonight. But anyways, um, and Ashton Larson has come along recently, has played obviously solid in the field. Um, he made a throw. Man, what when, what game was that? Um, he threw the runner out at home. Which game was that this weekend? Uh, I want to say it was game two maybe. I, I don't know. They, was, they get all mixed up for me. Yeah. Tried, that was a phenomenal play. Ashton Larson, in light of, you know, and all the negativity, I really liked Aiden Moffitt this weekend. And, and man, Larson has come on. He's he's batting well. Um, you know, I think tonight he was at, you know, which it's limited at bats, but he's batting well over 300 right now. And his defense has been as solid as it gets. He's got speed on the base pad. So, Jay Johnson's been wanting to produce more runs recently with laying down punts and stealing and things like that. He brings that aspect to this uh, as well. Um, if you're going to try and produce runs that way, uh, I, I've really liked what I've seen out of him. And I think he's going to become, he's gotten more consistent in the lineup. I kind of hope it stays that that way for him because he's been trending in the right direction. Highly, yeah. you know, recruited prospect. Uh, he was drafted, uh, but decided to come to LSU. So, really liking what I'm seeing out of Ashton lately. And man, that throw to home plate was phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. it was great. So, all right, Zach, that's enough about baseball. Um, thank goodness. It, yeah, it is what it is right now. Yeah, Zach, spring football game, a little different. Uh, yeah, man. I, I I like the way that Brian Kelly does things spring football wise. It's not your typical spring football, but I like the way that he does it. He's done it that way, you know, all the, the time he's been here. Um, Zach, what were your thoughts on what you saw? Who stood out to you? What did you like? What did you not like? You know, give me your thoughts on the spring game. Again, give it that caveat. Little take it with a grain of salt, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you're not seeing everything, that's for sure. Um, and you're not seeing everybody. There's some other players that will certainly play this coming fall that didn't play Saturday. Yeah. Um, so, what's your thoughts on on Zach this this spring game? Should I start positive or start negative? 
We just we just did negative. We just did negative with the baseball. So let's go positive. Okay. Uh, let's start with the defense. Uh, I, I mentioned whenever when we had our last show that somebody that was standing out defensively was PJ Woolen, and PJ Woolen looked good in the spring game as well. I mean, he looks he as of right now he looks like he is your best defensive back on the island, like your best cornerback. Um, and so I I was excited to see that. There's somebody. I mean, dude, the coverage was good. The coverage was great. You yeah. saw, you saw multiple times he was staying in stride with receivers. He would turn. He would stay in stride, turn, face the ball. How, how many times, Reagan? Last year, we were like, turn around, turn around, like, turn around, play the ball. Like, how many times did we say that last year? Too like, many. innumerous, exactly. And you saw that with PJ Woodland. I, 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 as I can recall, at least twice, right, where he turned around, filled the ball, deflected it. I mean, there's one he almost picked off. There was one where there was an out route that was ran in the end zone. And, I mean, he, he almost pretty much stride for stride. He reaches his hand out and deflects the ball. Against I mean, Kyron. Against yeah, against Kyron, against Kyron. So, uh, and that's your best receiver. So, I was really impressed with him. Really impressed with Gabriel Relaford, the freshman defensive lineman. Um he was constantly getting pressure in the backfield. I understand most of that was against uh, the the number twos on the offensive line, but Gabriel Rutherford looked really good. He was constantly getting pressure. Um, a big takeaway, Reagan, uh, as far as moving to the offensive side of the ball, a big takeaway, it looks like Ricky Collins is your number two. Yeah, man. Yeah. It really does. Um, I thought Ricky Collins yeah, – Harley may have something to say, too. Yeah, we'll have to see what Colin Hurley, because Colin, golly, Colin Hurley looked good too. I mean, he had the deep ball uh, to Kai Preen that looked really nice. But it, for me, it looks like it looks like Ricky Collins is your number two, um, yeah. and AJ Swan's going to be the odd man out there. Um, who knows? I mean, we'll see what Colin does in in fall. But yeah, uh, I thought Ricky looked really good. I, I think that's really encouraging for LSU fans. Uh, obviously, you want to have a really good quarterback room. You want to have a guy that can step up. And be the guy if if the guy goes down if your number one goes down. Um, really encouraged with us all with, from Garrett Nussmeyer. Found guys that were open. Um, obviously, he had the big pass to Xavion Thomas. Obviously, he had the big pass to Kyron Lacy. Uh, I, I mean, he looked really good. What was he seven to seven for almost two hundred yards, two touchdowns, something like that. Yeah. Uh, he only played the first half. Um, so yeah, overall, I thought Garrett looked great. Um, I thought both the running backs looked great with uh, Caleb Jackson and Josh Williams. Yes. I'm really excited to see kind of that tandem yeah. uh, this this year. So a lot of po- really positive things this year. I thought the offensive line, phenomenal job. Yeah. I mean, overall, the offense is really impressive. I mean, and you you have uh, the potential to, to do something similar. I'm not going to say it's going to be the same, okay? But you have the potential to do something similar to what you did last year, and that's that's put up 20, 20 plus to thirty points a game. So, um, and I expect LSU to be anywhere from the twenty eight to thirty two points per game range this year, um, and that's really good. That's going to win you a lot of ball games if you if you do that. So, uh, I was really impressed by that. Uh, obviously, Aaron Lacy. I mean, he stands out. Um, he looked really good as well. Uh, just overall, I, th- those are all really positive things and, and things that I really was encouraged by. I thought DJ Chester didn't miss a beat at center. Um, great. Looked, looked, looked really looked, good. Looked phenomenal. Um, obviously the biggest concern, which I think everybody's concern was, was there, there was a couple of coverage busts that, you, you know, you, you, you saw that and you're like, oh, gosh, you go back and it's like nightmare all over again from last year. So I, I think the reality is you, you're still ha- you're still having to figure out personnel. LSU has a personnel issue. I mean, they're, they had it last year. Guess what? They're going to have it this year. You're inexperienced and you're not as talented. You have some talent, but it's inexperienced. And then your experience, to be honest, just isn't that talented. We'll see what Jordan Gilbert does. We'll see what kind of role Major Burns plays. Uh, as we know, he's more down of a downhill defensive back. But uh, Blake Baker has his work cut out for him in this in his first season and trying to figure out the secondary. 
trying to figure out the communication. Uh, I, I mean, you're going to have to, you're going to have to scheme to help out the secondary this year. I mean, it's not like the secondary is just all of a sudden going to be, you know, DBU again. Like, I'm going to be honest, like the secondary is going to struggle some this year. Will it struggle as much as it did last year? I don't think so. Right. Um, but is it going to have its struggles? Are you going to see coverage bust every now and then? Um, I, yeah, I, I believe so. So, Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully it's a lot better than it was last year, but I still think the secondary is going to be your biggest concern and your biggest uh, weakness heading into this uh, fall. I will say, Zach, um, man, seeing Major Burns back at that strong safety position playing close to the line of scrimmage, he looked more comfortable. Yeah. And certainly more natural for him. Uh, fits his style of play better. Uh, he looked better uh, on Saturday than he has, you know, in the previous season playing a lot of coverage. Um, you know, it, I think it was communications on the back end. And I, and I don't want to call any players out, but, man, maybe – because I think Jardin's been playing – I think Jordan needs to play your your free you know center field type safety free safety, uh, and I don't know who you throw at the nickel you know, um, but you just can't if that's going to keep happening you got to make a change out there you know what I mean mm -hmm. got to make a change out there I, I you just can't see that again constant blown coverages over and over it, it wasn't good and and i we saw it so many times last year the blown coverage on the back end and then you, they they turn around and immediately point at somebody else like come on like we got to get it down and, and i do think Corey raymond will will correct that i think Corey will um and like you said, it will be a lot better. Um, there's obviously a lot of time, too, uh, before the season gets here to work on that. Fall camp, you know what I mean? Uh, hopefully that will get corrected. But that was certainly my concern as well, Zach. Yeah. As well. And, and Zach, I, I got to say this about Garrett. He just looks like the guy. Like, he looks comfortable – he clearly is a leader um, that you need in a quarterback, your starting quarterback. He fits that mold. He played it well on Saturday. He showed you, I think, everything you wanted to see Saturday. Yeah. Um, he threw the ball with accuracy, uh, seemed to make good decisions. You know, you obviously saw – with the Xavion Thomas, the the step up in the pocket, that was yep. a big thing. That was a big point of conversation was was Garrett's footwork um, and, and how that led to some of his mistakes in the past. That footwork was it, it, it you know for him, to see him step up in the pocket like that was was really um, you know encouraging. So I was I was really thrilled with everything that I saw out of Garrett and gave me. You know, I, you know, I don't want to get my hopes too high, but man, he looks like he's going to be a really, really solid QB one this year for us. It could be really great. Um, Josh Williams, man, looks about as consistent as anybody, man. I, I mean, Josh, I think right now should be RB one. I, I mean, he has earned it. He has stuck around. He's veteran in in everything he does. He does everything good for you and i was very pleased with him and this o-line is going to be so dominant uh, it's going to be weird because we're, we're used to seeing Jaden be the last two years our leading rusher you're going to see this year a more traditional right running style and you know I, man josh and Caleb, I think, are going to really pop at times, like really pop because of this offensive line. 
Yeah, I agree. Not not that they're not talented, because they are certainly uberly talented. But you're going to have some massive holes to run you're through. Gonna have, I mean, we saw it. We we saw it. Caleb, you know, had his breakoff run. Josh had plenty of breakoff run. Like, it's just, it, it's going to be really really awesome to watch this offensive line go to work for these running backs and establish more of a traditional run than what we've been seeing. Uh, Ryan's in here and um says Josh Williams number 18. I I couldn't agree more. I agree as well. I agree more. Um six, like six year guy, he's working on his master's degree. He's still <laughs> here like man, dude's been here for 18 years. He deserves to wear number 18, right? He's like the <laughs> definition of number 18, bro. Literally. So I he I think he's top candidate for number 18. That's my opinion. Uh, and obviously yours as well. I, but I couldn't agree more. Uh, you also said uh, – he also said, as long as Nuss doesn't force the ball into a coach, he'd be good. Yeah, and, and you didn't see a lot of that. You didn't see a lot mm-hmm. of that. This, the, the, and you also saw him make some – like with the throw with Kyron and P.J. Woodland that P.J. deflected, you saw he's, him. They're throwing 50-50 balls. Yeah, like there's contested balls. And, and Ricky was too. And if you watch, it, you know, if you watch the replay, it was a it was a good ball. Like it really was a good ball. Like it's where you wanted it. Just PJ played it great. Yep. Um, like he put it where Kyron could catch it because uh, it was right on the edge of the end zone. So Kyron was going to have to, you know, keep his foot, feet in bounds and make that catch. And and the the ball was placed right on the outside you know, of the end zone for for Kyron to go out and get it and keep himself in bounds. PJ just played it better. Um so it, it the, the the ball placement, his footwork, you know, the, the handling the snap under center, right? Because we haven't seen under center in so long. Like all of that, you know, you saw everything you wanted. And as you mentioned, he didn't even play the whole first half because you didn't need him to. He showed you what you showed what what he what you wanted to see, and it was great. It really was. Uh, another thing is was the screen game. I mean, I, I think the very first play went for twelve yards on a screen to Aaron Anderson. Yeah, right? you're going to see that. I think more as well. So I think Aaron Anderson and Xavier Thomas are going to be in, uh, involved in a lot of that type of stuff, jet sweeps, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Bubble screens, all that kind of stuff. One. One other player, Zach, that I don't think you mentioned that really popped was Kylan Jackson. Um, was all over the field, all over the field. Kylan Jackson was making plays left and right when he was out there, really impressive. Number 23, playing safety. He he looked really good, so maybe he can work to, to get some playing time as well. Uh, you know, two young guys, Gabe Relaford and – P.J. Woodland and – or so I guess three, not two. And, and Kylan Jackson, you know, Kylan's going to be a redshirt freshman and the other two are going to be true freshmen this coming year. They they all looked really great. So I think the the future's bright there. And, you know, with a guy like Gabe Relaford, it's, he's a freshman and he's going to have Bo Davis and Kevin Peoples his whole time, right, unless one of them leaves. But, you know, uh, that's not the plan. But – He's going to have a consistency at the D line coach. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think, I don't think Bo Davis is going anywhere. I, I, I think the only thing that's going to pull Bo is if he gets like a DC position. And at this point, I think all he cares about is coaching D line, right? <laughs> like, like, it's yeah. not like he's young and uh, looking to move up. All the time, right? He's been D line pretty much everywhere he's gone, and mm-hmm. I think it's really forte, and he likes it. Um, so having that consistency is going to be great. It really is going to be great. So the other thing, Zach, you you mentioned the busted coverage. Um, obviously, I think we'll address this a little bit in the transfer portal uh, discussion. Was the interior defensive line, man? It, it, it just lacks. It lacks. Um, guys, I think it's a personnel thing. You know, you're you're not uberly talented there. 
I really wish Mason Smith and McCowan would have came back for one more year. Yeah. And if you were somehow able to convince both of them to come back somehow, which I think both of them really could have benefited from them coming back, especially Mason Smith. I think Mason should have come back one more year. I think he was still dealing with his knee and trying to get back right. And, of course, we had no D-line coach the whole year, essentially. You know, we had, like, fill-ins and whatnot. But, man, to see Mackay and and Mason under Bo Davis would have been really nice. But, it you know, obviously they declare for the draft. They're going to the draft. Wish the best for them. So right now you're lacking talent wise at the D tackle position. For sure. Um, which has been discussed, obviously. I think everybody knows that. Uh, Brian Kelly, you know, was asked about the portal, what they're gonna do, and and literally said the only thing we're really gonna be looking for is defensive tackle. Um, and you've seen uh already on social media, you know, some some visit has been made by a few and contacted and offers and, you know, all that. Um, so I, that's certainly in the works. But you got to go get some guys there, get some depth, get some talent and some veteran players that can do what you really want them to do. Obviously, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the guy's first name, but it's Paez, right, from Wisconsin. Is it Geo? Geo, uh, I think it's Geo or Ovi. About that, well, Ovio Gofu was last year. Yeah, I know. I was just, I was thinking maybe it's something similar to that. Um, I think it's Geo, though. I think you're correct. It is Geo. Yeah, he's a he's gonna be like a senior guy coming in. Not not the numbers don't pop, but he's he's got size and he's got playing time in the Big Ten. Um, so he will be a guy that can that will help. And you've had other guys uh, you've contacted and had come on visits as well. So hopefully some of those will land. Zach, do you have any other more thoughts on the spring game? Any any other comments you want to make there? Uh not 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 really not too much. Um obviously the big the big thing is, you know, obviously this isn't the entire roster. You still got some guys there to come in, some guys that uh are on the roster now that just didn't play. So um you know, as we get into the fall, we're going to begin to see more and more things uh, that work out as far as who's who's starting, who's going to play major roles uh, on both sides of the ball. Um, I, I want to see a little bit more from C.J. Daniels. Yeah, something that was interesting, I don't know if you heard on the broadcast, Reagan, but the announcers, I don't, I don't know if they were just saying this or if they were uh, using some insight that they had learned about. But the announcers pretty much said that Chris Hilton was the number two wide receiver. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was that was pretty interesting uh, for me to hear because you know, obviously you have C.J. Daniels, you've got Xavion Thomas, um, yeah. you've got Aaron obviously there as well. So well, we knew Kyron was probably going to be you know one or one or two. A lot of us expected C.J. Daniels to come in and potentially be the guy, or if not, maybe the number two. But it seems like. Uh, the guys that were already at LSU are kind of uh, making a statement here in spring ball. So we'll see as Xavion and uh, we'll see as um, CJ Daniels, as they get comfortable in the offense and as they get more and more, uh, as they gain more and more chem- chemistry with, with uh, Nuss, you know, we'll see how that plays out heading into the fall. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Zach. I think that pretty much wraps things up with spring football. Let's hit a quick break, and we'll give you our uh, updates on the transfer portal in pretty much all sports um, right after this. Five Star Hero, your intro and outro music for the Tigers Avenue show. They ain't ready for that LSU. Go check out all his other music on all the major platforms. Don't forget to follow him on Instagram, at Saints Anthem, and at Twitter, at One Nation Doty. Don't forget to check out his Facebook page for all his Saints and LSU merchandise. Can't get any better than Sarah Klein Stevens, attorney at law. Her firm focuses on the needs of the elderly 
and maintaining their dignity throughout the process. Here for you, here for your family. Sarah Klein Stevens, attorney at law. Right back at it here in the Tigers Avenue to give you the latest and the greatest on the transfer portal. Uh, obviously, the spring window is opened, and boy, it's Zach, it's already starting to get flooded with anybody and everybody. Yep. <laughs> Uh, it's it's popping as it always is. Um, Zach, obviously, I, I think we, we'll, we'll just go ahead and, and attack this head on because uh, I'm trying to remember who uh, Buster was 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 asking about this. You know, the if we're going to address any defensive tackles, yeah. So uh, Philip Blitty, I think is how you pronounce his last name, or Bildy. Blitty or Bildy, um, was on campus uh, this past week um, and, you know, had a photo op and everything, had a whole official visit. He's uh, transferring from Indiana, had, came and had a visit to LSU. It looked like it really went well, Zach. It really yeah. did. And I don't know. He's a senior guy, veteran guy, lots of playing time in the, in the Big Ten. And – I just don't know how you don't pick LSU. <laughs> I just <don't. laughs> like you're a senior veteran guy transferring from Indiana. You get to talk to Bo Davis. Yep. As the position coach here at LSU. And probably based on what you're hearing, Zach, from Bo Davis, is that man, playing time is wide open. You know, if you're in there, you're competing and you're you're playing well. You can earn a spot, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't see how you don't pick LSU. Then again, I you know I'm not the one having the conversations. I can't make the decision for the guy. Um, but man, he 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 came had a, looked like had a great visit, and I, I like LSU's chances to land uh, Philip Blitty. Um, and I think he might have one other visit, and I can't remember where it is. Maybe I can find that for y'all real quick. Um, but he had a visit prior to LSU, um, canceled one of his other ones. There it is. Philip Blitty. There you go. Okay, so he is actually – uh, visiting Auburn, it looks like, as well. Uh, received an offer from Colorado. Um, but, man, he – yeah, he had a tr – uh, there it is. That's, that's what it was. Had a visit at Washington. Was going to go to Arizona. Canceled that and came to LSU. It looks like he is now um, taking a visit to Auburn. So – you know, maybe Auburn could get in the mix and and make that a little difficult for LSU. I still like LSU's chances, though. I still like LSU's chances. But uh, you need to go land a guy like Philip Blitty. Yeah. Veteran, sizable guy who can come in, be coached, and, um, and I, I really like LSU's chances there. Another guy, Zach, obviously you added Geo um, – but another guy that popped up on LSU's radar was a player from – C.J. West from Kent State. C.J. West from Kent – I was about to say Kent State, and, and I couldn't remember his last name. I knew it was C.J. Yeah, C.J. Um, West. He received an offer from LSU, but he's received an offer from a lot of places. Um, so, clearly he's on LSU's radar about, from entering the portal today. Regardless, Zach, regardless, I think you're going to land a couple guys. I think you're going to land somebody, right? Like, yeah. You're, Brian Kelly made it clear you're going to the portal to find defensive tackles. A school like LSU is going to pull in some defensive tackles with yeah. Bo Davis at the helm of things, landing those guys. Um, and, Zach, really, I think if you land a couple veteran guys looking for one last good season at a really solid school, I think Bo Davis 
come, you know, not this season, but the next recruiting wise, development, you know, development wise, will have this interior defensive line the way you want it to look. Um, but I, you're going to land some guys, whether it's Philip Blitty or whether it's CJ West or somebody else from the portal. You know, LSU is going to go get uh, some guys to help with the interior defensive line regardless. Yep. Um, men's basketball, Zach. We talked about him last time. LSU lands a commitment from UT Martin guard, uh, point guard transfer, Jordan Spears. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. Uh, if you if you haven't noticed yet, my allergies are. It's that time of the year. It's springtime, baby. It's, it's I, I'm I'm happy though, man. It's 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 the weather's heating up. It's it's nice yeah. outside, but <laughs> but with it comes the seasonal allergies. Well, I spent the whole day outside today with. Uh, I went to ICC, which is community college here, and. The church grilled out for students and whatnot. They're having some kind of like homecoming type of ordeal at the school. And so the church went and grilled out for them all week. And so I was outside the entire day. There you go. My allergies are kicking my butt tonight. So I apologize. But uh, as I was saying, LSU lands a huge pickup from from, uh, the portal. Uh, You needed a Zach, another guard to compliment Cam Carter and also Mike Williams, and then the incoming freshman, Curtis Given, yep. um, and, and Victorious Miller. You go out and you get a guy who, man, Zach, put up a lot of stinking points this, pre- uh, this previous season. He averaged, Zach, averaged over 21 points a game. Yeah. He averaged over – over four uh, assists a game and over four rebounds a game. And I, I'm trying the, – the picture I sent you and Dad, man, you really like to see things like this. Um, Jordan Spears uh, was was nominated for the, the Lou Henson National Player of the Year Award. Spears, or not Jordan Spears, I'm sorry, Jordan Sears, was was the only Division I men's basketball player, the only, the only one to tally 650-plus points, 140-plus rebounds, and 140-plus assists this season. And 75 trays. And 75 trace. Yes. Yeah. So the the dude can hoop, right? He gets buckets. The dude gets buckets and <laughs> he can dish it. And at 5'11 can get you some rebounds. Um so I'm I'm really impressed. Um big time get big time get with Sears, and it was a big time get because man, you did not really have a true facilitator this year. And now you have Sears who knows how to facilitate it and can get a lot of points. Yep. And you've added Cam Carter, who you know can score. You're bringing back uh, officially, right? They announced it on their social media. You're bringing back Tyrell Ward, Jalen Reed, uh, Damian Collins. You're going to add Corey Chest in, who redshirted this year, and the freshman. Hopefully you add a big man out of the portal. I really think you need to add a big man. Yeah, I agree. And this team will be complete. I, Zach, I just I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I, I have not seen LSU associated with any big guys. I don't. I don't. I don't know the thought process there. Maybe they're thinking Jalen Reed's going to be your guy. Uh, maybe that's what they're thinking. But I would really like to see a, a true five. Yeah, I agree. And it, this team can be complete because Zach, mm-hmm. you're playing Sears at the one, Carter at the two, Tyrell at the three, Jalen Reed at the four, and if you go get a big five, right? That's th- that's the pretty good team. Five would be really really nice, really nice. And then you're talking Damian Collins coming off the bench. You're talking Curtis Givens, Mike Williams. 
uh, Corey Chess, like like you've got some pieces that yeah, you got some talented depth. Correct, talented depth coming off the bench. So we'll see. Obviously, it's not over with yet. Um, but Zach, I, I told you they they're you know you do probably need to add a wing player to play to back up. Uh, oh, you also is Derek Fountain coming back? I think he is. Yeah. So you'll have Derek Fountain as a backup as well. Another one I, I failed to mention him. Um, you, you, Toby Okani, uh, the UIC transfer. I mentioned him a while back. He has cut his list to five schools, and LSU is one of those schools. Uh, he's a wing, you know, forward uh, type player. LSU's in his final five, and Zach. You know, the really only other big name school on his list is West Virginia. Uh, you know, maybe one of the other ones would land them, like like I think St. Bonaventure. You remember the Brown team that we played first? Yeah, we played them yes. first round of the NCAA tournament a couple of years Bonaventure. ago. Uh, and, and I'm trying to – I can't remember who else. LSU, West Virginia, and then there's two others. You know, West Virginia has a brand-new coach. And there's some hype there. Maybe maybe they pulled him in. Uh, but obviously, LSU is recruiting this guy. Uh, they've made his final list. The other thing that, Zach, I'm, I'm pretty bummed about is, is uh, Clifford uh, Umori, big man out of uh, from the Rutgers in the portal, cut his list down to, I think, like 10 schools, and LSU was not included. So mm -hmm. I was pretty bummed about that one. But – there's plenty of big guys in the portal. Will LSU get in the mix of any of them? I haven't seen it yet. I'd love to see it. So, Zach, do you have any other comments portal-wise women's basketball? I think we looked at a, a girl, Deja Kelly. Is that right? Out of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the Clemson transfer, is guard is, she's guard as well. I can't remember her name. She, former five-star player. She's transferring from Clemson. LSU, I think, is bringing her on a visit. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, right now for me, uh, we discussed this on the last show. You, you really need to go get uh, similar to LSU men's basketball. You need to go get you a true point guard. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe the girl from, uh, I think her name's Deja Kelly, uh, from <clears throat> North Carolina. Maybe she's the one. Uh, maybe we'll this girl from Clemson. I, I'm not sure. You said what, Zach? I said we'll have to wait and see what Kim's going to do. We'll have to wait and see. All right, guys. That's the latest uh, transfer portal wise. I, oh, also uh, the first edition for the portal for LSU. Tigers, Jackson Howard. Jackson Howard. Yeah. And I really hate to see him go because he he's he looks like a stud. He really yeah. does. And I think he's right behind. You know, I think he's second team, right? I, I mean, he's got size and looks like he's got speed. I, I really hate to see him go. But we're not hurting for edge players, so it's not a huge blow. But Jackson Howard is is hitting the portal as well. All right, guys, um, my nose is about to kill me, and I'm probably going to sneeze uh, 1,500 times whenever we end this show, so probably need to wrap things up here. Appreciate all of y'all. Uh, for coming in and commenting, Ryan, you've been in here late. Oh, Danny Girl, uh, Tyler Towns, and all of you. Mike Bowen, good to see you again, buddy. Uh, it's Zach this weekend. You got Missouri on the road. Maybe the Please. Them an SEC victory. But we'll discuss it next time here on the Tigers Avenue. Five Star Hero, take us out. Peace. Tight.